Studio Live AI speaker system for personas today. If I can go ahead and get the PowerPoint up for this. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, so uh, just for uh, reference again, Chris LeBlanc on guitar, Roland Garen on bass, and David Fingers on the drums. Is that obvious? I think that's kind of the Department of the Obvious of Fingers. Where'd you get your nickname? Where'd you get your nickname, Fingers? Yeah. Okay, sorry. I had too much Starbucks this morning. Video games, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what's funny? I saw him texting yesterday, and it was like this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to move on here. So, what we've got, guys, is a whole new line of speakers. Personas has just entered the market with speakers, and to do it, in my opinion, they've rocked it pretty well. I don't work for Personas, so you'll hear me say a lot of things today that are like they, as opposed to I. But they've got three lines. Uh, they've got a 12-inch, a 15-inch, and a triple eight, which is triple eight is what we're showing today. What's interesting about this is the center driver on this one and the top driver on them is a conical. So there's an eight with another horn inside of it. It goes through. I'll show you some cutaways of it in a minute. But that's kind of the secret sauce of what we're doing that's different than what a lot of the guys are doing uh, these days. So there's also, in the back, two subwoofers. They're 1,000 watts apiece. You saw the 2,000 on the other. Uh, so that's a pretty sweet power. And here is one of the reasons this thing's so good, Mr. David Gunness. Anybody familiar with Dave? You know who Dave is? Dave Gunness is, um, I don't know, five-time tech award winner, multiple patents. He has designed speakers for the last, I don't know how long, probably longer than I've been alive. He's an amazing individual. This is his technology. Fulcrum Acoustic is his company that he's doing now, and he's got some technology that we'll get into here in a minute. Here's some of the things that make our, our speakers a little different than everybody else. It's a different, it's unique, as I said here, three-way design. Oh, my diamond. Hey, hey, okay. Uh, so the crossover points in our speakers are very different than everybody else's. Am I getting cut out? What's going on? No? It's not like there's any wireless interference on the show floor today or anything like that. We don't make wireless, by the way. <laughs> so that's not our problem. Um, so the, the difference here is that, uh, let's take this guy, for instance, versus the 12 and the 15. All three of these drivers are firing the low frequencies at the same time because of the way they're crossing over. So with three drivers firing that, you have more radiating surface. So there's actually more air being pushed physically than a 15-inch driver, for instance. So people look at this and go, well, it's kind of small. Well, yeah, but actually there's, it's bigger than a 15-inch speaker in some ways. Okay? And we'll get into that a little bit more in a little bit. Uh, the Fulcrum Acoustic GQ is they're what they're calling temporal equalization. They're doing quite a bit of DSP. I haven't said it yet, but inside the speaker is a full-on chip. Um, Randall was saying that it was a, a Kendall Fire chip. Something to, he was joking to play Angry Birds on it, but that's the kind of processing power that's in the speaker. So a lot of the, you know, the typical uh, crossover, uh, outboard crossover box, DSP boxes, there's literally two of those inside of one of these. So quite a bit of processing power. Uh, the wireless integration. So in the back, there's a card. You can get a couple of different options for it. Right now, we're running it on a little Bluetooth chip that talks to my iPad, so I can actually tune the speakers with my iPad. I take control of it. This little guy turns white, and I can make adjustments to the speaker. I can see a lot of different things with it. That's the second half of the presentation I'll get into in a few minutes. Uh, irresponsibly high power. I think it's amazing. 2,000 watts in this guy. But I don't think anybody else is doing that right now. And it, we used it the other night in a ballroom here. I did two of these aside with two of the subs. No, I'm sorry, one, one per side with two subs, 450 people in a ballroom, and it was slamming, slamming. It was really great. We obviously can't turn it up that loud here, but for reference, this is 10,000 watts of power that you're listening to, but it's on about two. So it'll get a lot louder. Uh, what do I got next here? Okay, so here's the driver. This is what's neat about it. If you're not filled with a conical setup, basically the horn goes through the, the mid-range driver. But it keeps the point source uh, symmetrical. So that was the beauty of that. Many people have done this over the years, but there's problems with this. For instance, when the high frequencies come out of here and you get high levels come out of the driver behind it, it will distort the high frequencies. He's, Dave has went in and done this crazy voodoo DSP to fix that. There's a lot of other things that, uh, that is inherently interesting about a coaxial design, which is why we're kind of now calling it a coaxial driver, um, so that it 
basically wherever you walk around this thing, if the booth was bigger, you could walk across it. You don't hear the weird phase shifty stuff. When you're in the center, it sounds great. And with a lot of speakers, you move a couple of feet off center, it's kind of like, huh? With this thing, it just sounds like it pans to the other speaker. Or I was panning stuff around here this morning. My God, and it's just like, it's like a studio monitor. It's really un unbelievable. Um, so why hasn't coaxial taken over the world? Because it needed this much DSP to really do it right. Dave has taken and designed the speaker based around the best physical characteristics of the speaker, knowing that he would fix certain things with DSP. Most people in the past have basically designed the best speaker they could and then put a little, little salt and pepper DSP on the top of it. He kind of solved problems in DSP that you can't solve physically and solve physical problems you can't solve with opposite way. So, 32-bit, um, 96K floating, serious processing power. He licensed all of the um, his proprietary things that he wouldn't even really tell us what he's doing inside of it. And asymmetric crossover is also something that's different. So I said that all three drives are firing lows. Well, that's easy, right? But if you think about the distance in between these two speakers, and let's say 200 hertz is that long, the crossover is a softer slope, and he's actually tuned it so that as it goes through, and if you kind of go like this, you would have like a distance from here to here is different than when I'm here. So with different frequencies, I sometimes have phase issues. He's actually tuned it and changed the crossover so that this way and this way, it sounds like one point source speaker. Uh, performance contouring, dynamic limiting, excursion limiting, all things that obviously we can do with DSP. It actually, the circuit board senses the driver, so it knows how good or bad the driver is responding. It echoes it out to your iPad, so if you're about to uh, overload or if you're driving really hard or Chris's guitar solo is rocking, you'll get a red light on your iPad going, hey, double check your house left speaker. So, pretty sweet as well. And we're going to do another song because you're tired of me talking and you want to hear it.